Look, I'm not a nuclear Scientologist. I can't build a radio. There's a lot I don't know in this world. And one thing I do know is how to be happy and healthy somewhat. You might not have the perfect skin, but you're gonna overcome your disease following my advice. I just wanna talk a bit about nutritional science and how it potentially dissuades you from the truth. The power is within us. We can make this better. Forget divide and conquer. Whether the storm together. storm together. So I've never been one to like quote studies and according to this study to back up my claims. A lot of people love that. You come to earth and you're just like, I want proof. There's proof of nothing. Everything is constantly changing. Time doesn't even exist. You're like, oh, in the future. What future? Everything is right now. And in this third dimensional lie, it appears there's time. You can't prove a damn thing. So scientists, it's a whole scientist religion type of thing. Like this is the truth. We found it. It's better than God. It's proven. So I was watching a Mike the Vegan video the other day and don't quote me on this. I already forgot most of it. It was something like lycopene and adding fat to these carotenoids increased their absorbability and these low fat vegans are all wrong and we have the studies to prove it. And the whole video was based, I like Mike the Vegan. He's one guy I trust in the vegan world. It's like, okay, for certain things, I'm like, he's done the research, I, I trust him. The whole video was based on the lycopene molecule, don't quote me on a damn thing right now. It gets absorbed more if you add some fat. So like they had higher blood levels of this antioxidant. And so like, there it is. There's the proof that we need fat to absorb this. What was the outcome? That's what I'm asking. Why do I want more lycopene in my blood instead of in the cell where it's there protecting your cell and defending it from attacks? Just floating in the blood, it's like, oh no, maybe. It's very similar to how insulin sensitivity goes down with higher fat your antioxidant sensitivity just got mushed with gooey oil. So it's like, it's not as good. It's like much worse actually, whereas the low fat people right into the cells, not even detectable in the blood. Could be that, huh? Come on, that's a theory. Point I'm trying to make is these numbers might not mean a damn thing. Like you're looking at these graphs and I'm like, what happened to the people? Did they notice anything better? Like, oh, the fat group had all these antioxidants. They could stand out in the sun, like directly in the sun for 10 hours straight. They didn't burn. What happened to them? Did any of them feel better or different? So I like to go back to common sense that says, if there's carotenoids in lettuce and I eat some lettuce, I find some in the ground. It's like, that's a natural wild herb, I tell you. So you just grab some, say it's dandelion. Okay, I eat that. Oh, did you know that you needed to travel 300 miles west to find an almond tree? And then if you bring that with you and then eat it there, then you would have absorbed something. You're mocking God. Everything is contained in the food that you need. Lettuce, that's a snack. For frugivores, they, that's a meal for some of them. They don't even do the salad thing. They just, the, nothing gets added to that romaine. I do it to think you need to combine a food with something that likely doesn't grow anywhere near it or get ripen at the same time. Like all these factors working towards this, you need fat to absorb the carrot. That's why I just listen to human stories and anecdotes. And those are way worse if we're being honest. Like you never know, someone's like, I ate nothing but dog meat. Oh, I, my arthritis is healed. And it's like, okay, that's great dog boy. but. Like what happens to you in 20 years? Like the anecdotes are cool for short term, but like you can reverse a lot of problems short term quite easily, but it's the longevity we're speaking about here and like chronic illnesses. Take some time, man. Like we're not following these people. We don't know what steak and butter girl's gonna be like when she's 60. Is she still alive? Is she still doing this? So sometimes it's hard to glean much from an anecdote. It's like, okay, whatever, I don't trust you. You don't even know what you did. And 
They say they did one thing, but it was like seven other things surrounded that. Uh, many different lifestyle choices got switched. And it's like, we all try to say it was because of this thing. Like I just made that jerk seasoning video where I'm like, this is effing me. Like something in here is off. And I often get these conclusions wrong. It's like, oh, it's the vinegar. Okay, remove all vinegars. And it's like, no, it was just ginger. You're allergic to ginger. I don't know, man. I just, we all want to say, oh, it was the sugar that effed me. It was the fat. It's too much protein. It's this. It's anti-nutrients in plants. That's another video waiting to happen. Anti-nutrients versus common sense. Huh? Stay tuned for that one on the Vegetable Police Network. So what I've always done and had pretty good success with is listen to these fad diet anecdote people. Oh, you healed that on that? Okay, I'll try it. And then see how you feel. Experiment. Learn. Experiment. Read something. Try it for yourself. You can't just read a story and not do something and have an opinion on it. Like, oh, carnivore diet. That's stupid. I had to try it. And I did try it. A lot of benefits. A lot of potential downsides long term, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of heart pain, nipple pain. I don't need that in my life. Rash on my face. Like, no, thank you. Okay, that went haywire quick. Now we're back to the roots. Plants. Giving me acne. That's where I belong. But together, I think we've figured out a lot already. There's people who have pioneered certain paths and we see their results and it's like, okay, maybe I'll follow you, but like add in some of my own things. And I don't believe a hundred percent of what you do. And we all come up with our own unique fad diets in the end. And that's a good time. So I don't trust science a hundred percent, but it's nice to see sometimes when there's a study, it's like, okay, more eggs equals you died. Uh-oh, okay, maybe don't eat eggs. Keto has like all-cause mortality increase. It's like, that's probably bad. Okay, maybe veer away from that. Carbs are good sometimes. What's the end result of all this refined sugar? Probably not great. Probably not great, but I'm enjoying sprinkling some on my fruit a lot. It's not good, but eventually I think we'll learn that that was a mistake and like whole foods are good. All plants, not mostly plants. Mr. Whoever that guy was. That book, I read it. Never again, it's not a double read. I'll leave after you thumb up the video. Michael Pollan, it came. You thumbing this video down? I think there was actually a study about people like you and they found that when things got hard, you gave up because you were cold and wet. And you believed that eating nothing but hot dog meat increases body temperature. So you did that, but then you succumb to nitrate poisoning. You suck. So I'll leave. Thank you for the Bitcoin donations. Do you trust science, other people doing fad diets, or yourself and God? And our man Jesus, he's nice too. I'll leave. Subscribe for me and I'll see you next.